Hello over there. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. We decided we would switch it up this week and do a little Q&A since we're not traveling right now on the road. I had four days at home before we head off to finals week on Friday in Nanjing, China, and I get to spend some time with Brian. Yay! So about a week ago, we asked you guys on Instagram just to send us in questions, anything you want, and now we're going to answer them. So let's get into the big questions. And then at the end, we'll do a little rapid fire fun ones for both of us. Also, if you watched our last video, just to confirm, I do shower. <laughs> Hence my hair being wet. Just got out of the shower. She specifically showered just <laughs> so you guys video. think that she showered. <laughs> question number one. First up, which is one question that we got a lot, is how did you guys meet? Well, so three and a half years ago, we were both playing in Italy. I was playing in Padova, which is like 30 minutes west of Venice. She was playing in Canigliano, which is 30 minutes north of Venice. And we had a mutual friend come in town and visit both of us. And we met up, had a night out in Venice, hung out, and the rest is history pretty much. If you've ever been to Italy, it's kind of hard not to fall in love. Everything's like super romantic. Our third date was on a hot air balloon ride overlooking Tuscany and we stayed in a castle and we did wine tasting and I think we decided we just have to be together after that date. We went on Airbnb and it was the off season so everything was really cheap and for 45 euros a night we got the top suite in a castle, Castello di Mugnana. We showed up and there was no one else there so for 45 euros a night we had the entire castle to ourselves and we went wine tasting, hot air ballooning. It was a romantic third date, <laughs> and it's been all downhill since then. Oh. <laughs> Next up is tips on long distance. So Brian and I have been together about three and a half years, and I played two seasons in Turkey, and obviously I'm traveling a lot with the national team all summer. So we do quite a bit of distance, and I think my number one tip to long distance would be patience. Um, I'm not so good at it, so it's hard for me to give that tip, but um, Brian has been extremely patient throughout um, my career and really supportive of what I do. And the days aren't always easy. There's a lot of hard days and a lot of days where you feel more like a pen pal than in a relationship. And so that for me is really difficult, but he's always there reminding me what I'm doing is really important and what I'm pursuing a lot of people in the world would dream of so he's not going anywhere and to have that reassurance and to have that reminder daily makes it really easy for me to pursue what I want to be doing and he also this year made the sacrifice to come live with me for five months while he was recovering from surgery and if you play overseas to have somebody there with you through that grind is night and day like different it's just you leave practice you come home to somebody you miss christmas you make miss thanksgiving you miss all the important things and you have that person there for you um to make up for those special moments and so i think that was something that really fortified our relationship and helped me through a very long season I think more than half of our relationship has been long distance, so I totally agree. The word that I was thinking of was just patience. You just kind of got to roll with the punches and know that at the end of the day, that person's there and they love you. And it sucks not seeing each other, but when you do get to see each other, it's way better. And really you special. you don't take it for granted any of the time that we're together, so it's worth it in the end. But you got to roll with some punches. I also think communication is really key. I would say I over communicate and Brian under communicates, but it's finding that balance and um, Thank you. Well, it's true. <laughs> no, it is true. I also think like he always encourages me to tell him how I feel so that it's not like pent up inside and when you're distance you get four hours a day to talk to each other so maybe I'm thinking something and I'm creating it in my head bigger than what it actually is and so if you can communicate that to the other person and say like, hey, I don't know if this is like valid, but this is what I'm feeling and I just want you to want to share that with you and they're really open to receiving it and also helping you work through it. It's all about communicating and trying to understand where the person is coming from and then finding that balance at the end of it. All right, next question. Kelsey, um, why did you leave Vakifbank? 
that's a really difficult question for me because of how much I loved Bakif Bank and how grateful I am for the entire program and the entire club and everything they did for me in my career. Um, I really loved the staff, the coaches, just everything about it. There was nothing wrong. I think in the end it came down to wanting to prepare myself to be ready for the Olympics and for the US team. The Olympics is a huge deal for us and I just want to be able to play as much as possible and gain the experience that I gained playing for Bakif Bank. And obviously I'll get to play with Nas, who's a great setter. And just, it'll be a different experience, a new challenge, a new coach to play for, a new group of people. And I'm really excited for that challenge and I'm really excited for the opportunity. But at the same time, I have so much love for Bakif Bank, for all the fans, for everything that had been given to me. And I am excited for Fenerbahce and I am excited. I know all the fans reached out to me and I'm really looking forward to that. Quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> you got quite a few. Do you like living in Turkey? Yeah. yeah. I love living in Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> so my first year playing overseas out of college, I went and played in Athens for Panathinaikos. And the way I describe Turkey and Istanbul to people is it is almost identical to Athens except Muslim, which isn't a bad thing. It's just that there's mosques instead of churches and you hear like the call to prayer five or six times a day. It feels really similar to living in Athens, which I absolutely love. I love Greek people, I love Turkish people, the food is amazing, the people are really warm and friendly, and I'm honestly excited to go back, so yes, we love living in yeah. Turkey. <laughs> and we love Turkish people, we've been welcomed with open arms. Any problems we have, people are like so willing to help us, so it's been such an easy transition, and I honestly like, just, I'm so excited to go back. I, I love Turkey. How did you start playing volleyball? Your story is more fun than mine. <laughs> I kind of grew up in a volleyball family. My uncle is the head coach at Nebraska, so he actually coached her in college, which is weird. Go so big red. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad played, my mom played in college, and so I just kind of grew up around volleyball. I didn't play organized volleyball until I was 17 so I just played club for two years actually I played 18 and under club for two years I didn't even play anything else it was just 18 and under 18 and under and then college but yeah that's how I started just volleyball family grew up going down to the beach every day with my sister who's a baller and yeah I just always loved the game I started playing volleyball when I was 10 as cross training for basketball um, I played basketball since the time I was like two years old, came from a basketball family and I played softball, did dance, I played absolutely everything and I just got into volleyball because um, all my friends were doing it and I played until I was 16 all different sports and then once I was 16 I committed to volleyball full time and I played at Sports Performance Volleyball Club and then I started to get recruited at 16 and um, ended up taking a scholarship to the University of Tennessee, where I would play there for three years. So a lot of you asked about how I got into USA Volleyball and my career with USA, also what Brian's currently doing um, professionally and if he's ever played with USA and kind of his career. But I went to the University of Tennessee and I played there for three years and I transferred to the University of Nebraska. Also a lot of people asked why. At the time, I just wasn't being fulfilled in volleyball the way that I felt like I wanted to. And everything from the school, the girls were perfect at Tennessee. I love my experience there, but I just had kind of a falling out with the volleyball side of things. And I decided that since I would graduate in December in three and a half years that I would go finish my last season and luckily Nebraska had graduated all their seniors and were looking for somebody so the doors were open there and I was really fortunate. But I went to the University of Nebraska, played for John Cook, and he got me a tryout with the USA team as a libero originally. So I tried out as libero, I made it, and that summer I was supposed to stay with the team, but I ended up getting a concussion and I had to finish some school. So I went back, back to the University of Nebraska, finished in December, and then I got to have a tryout in the USA gym then as an outside because of the success that I had at Nebraska as an outside. So I started with the team in 2014, which was the year we won gold at World Championships. 
and I've kind of been on the team ever since then. I did World Cup 2015, Olympics 2016. 2017 I took a season off and then I came back last year and had to play libero, had to fill in that role. And this year I'm back at outside. Yeah, it's been a long career with USA and I'm really, really fortunate for Karch seeing potential in me. And I also believe that my career has been really successful both with USA and professionally because of my ball control skills. If you're young and you wanna play volleyball, learn ball control because once you turn pro, the substitutions go down and everybody has to be able to do everything. So it takes you from a good player to a great player. How'd you get there? We were talking about career. I know, but now it's your turn. You're a rambler. <laughs> I was just. So my career with USA has been a little bit different. I tried out for the junior national team when I was 17. After my first club season, nobody even knew who I was, but I had a good tryout. The coaches were like, yeah, let's take this kid. I made like the training roster, went to that tryout, made the final roster, we went to Canada, went to Brazil for the world championships, and I was on the team with basically all the guys who are on the national team now, just like Taylor Sander, Micah Christensen. It was a really, we had a really good team. And that was a lot of fun. And then we all went to college. I didn't do much with the national team during college, but after college, I went back in the gym and went to the Pan American Games in 2015 with the indoor team. Um, and then was in the gym for a while, but I was always battling my knee injury. Finally, after my third year of pro, I decided it's time to hang it up, take care of my body. I did two knee surgeries and a hip surgery, and they wanted me to do so shoulder surgery as well, but I declined that one. My hip also feels great, but my knee was a pretty complicated surgery that I'm 14 months post-op, actually 14 months today post-op. So the, the knee surgery was really complicated. It was a cartilage surgery where I basically just had no cartilage left since I was like 19. I almost did a different surgery in 2012 for it. But anyway, they took a little bit of cartilage out of my knee, they grew it in a lab, and then they put that back in. So the last 14 months, my body's been trying to accept that new cartilage and let it grow and heal. It's been just a battle for 14 months mentally more than physically, but still Physically, I'm just not ready to play. I'm getting stronger and progressing a lot. The pain's going down, but still not quite ready. I'm now with the USA Beach team. They're helping me with physical therapy and letting me use the facilities to get stronger. So I'm very grateful for that. And that's where I'm at, just recovering and trying to play again. Okay. How did you get recruited? I think one of the biggest questions I get in general overall is how do you get recruited? And I've been removed from the college game for six years. We graduated five years ago. I played for sports performance in just outside of the city of Chicago. Um, and we would have coaches come and watch us play on weekends in um, our club tournaments. I never got recruited in high school because most of those coaches were coming for the club tournaments. So I would just email coaches that I was interested in and colleges that I was interested in and see if they had any interest back. And then I just got lucky that there was interest for me. I think I was one of the like top 10 recruits in the country in my year. So for me, I was more fortunate, but I would say if you want a college coach to see you, send video, send emails, just send what you can, share your schedule. Make a highlight tape. Yeah, anything productive or proactive, just, just don't, go for just it. Just don't put like bad music to it. It doesn't need music. <laughs> just make a highlight tape of volleyball. Yeah, I think in general, coaches are super busy and maybe they only hear of certain recruits and stuff, but Kim Hill, who's like a star professionally and on the national team, got chosen from a camp out of nowhere to be on the national team. So there's always that opportunity. When do you get married and where? So we told you how we met in Italy. Third date was in Tuscany. So we were looking around California and we're like, we want to kind of replicate the Tuscan Italy experience. And everything in California is super expensive. It is really expensive if you want to try to do that. <laughs> and also we wanted to have, we have a lot of people that we want to invite to our wedding. So we finally got the idea, let's have a tiny wedding with just our immediate family and bridal party 
in Tuscany. So we're getting married in Tuscany in a little villa down by Siena. It's a beautiful little villa. I got to see it last winter. It's gorgeous. It's gonna be really cool and it sleeps like 36 people or something. So we're gonna pack our immediate friends and family in there and then we are coming back home and the following week or two weeks later we're having a reception in Southern California with all of our friends and family. Yeah. And we're going to make a video of the wedding itself in, in Tuscany, and then we're going to show that at the wedding, so it's going to be really cool. Yeah, and, and I'm designing my dress with a designer, so I'm really excited. Oh, how um, do you feel about cats? This is our sweet angel baby guy that we love so much. And we have a little bug nugget who's never sitting still, so. Yeah, I don't even know where she is. She's probably, she has a little perch in our room that she loves to sleep in. They but are this, a pride and joy. This guy right here is actually my best friend in the entire world, so that's how we feel about cats. I highly recommend following Brian on Instagram for wonderful content on his morning, story. <laughs> morning cat videos with this guy. What characteristics do you like most about each other? I like that Brian is really funny. He is usually always able to make me laugh and just make everything light. I think my favorite characteristic about you is just how kind you are. Like you don't have a mean atom in your body. You can't be mean. Is it hard to be a libero? I would say the hardest part about going from outside to libero is that I can't give in the ways that I am used to giving. Like there's only a certain amount of skills that you actually can do, so that's difficult. Also, left back isn't the easiest to read when you're used to reading in six. That's center back. There's a lot more pressure when you're a libero on yeah. passing and defense. I felt more pressure to be perfect as a libero in my reception than I do as an outside because there's just so yeah. many things I can do to contribute. Yeah, as um, an outside you have like six different skills where you can contribute to the game. As a libero you're basically reception, and defense, defense, and setting. out of system setting. So. Yeah. You've got to be extra good at those. How do you balance YouTube and volleyball? Um, <laughs> Pretty easily. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> we just, the whole idea behind the YouTube channel is to share what it's like to be professional volleyball players because there's nothing out there that shares that in information and the behind the scenes and stuff. So we really love doing it. I do a lot of the videography when we're not together and then Brian does all of the editing and so all of the amazing videos you see, he's He's doing it. How do you stay motivated when things get hard? I think there's just something inside me that like can't accept not pursuing things. Even when it's like so, so difficult and I want to quit and I want to cry, like I just wake up and I still am like, I want to be the best. And it's never going to go away and it's a sick habit that I have. <laughs> um, I think that like feeling of wanting to pursue something really big and challenging is kind of what keeps me mo motivated. And he's my reminder when I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> well, things have gotten hard for me. <laughs> the last two years have been pretty brutal. I had hernia surgery, hip surgery, two knee surgeries. So I've just kind of adopted the mindset of taking it one day at a time and just trying to get better every day. I'm nowhere near my end goal and that's hard to deal with but at the same time I'm getting better and I'm better than I was last week, I'm better than I was last month so there's progress happening and I'm just sticking to the plan and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There was a quote I heard once where he stated that I've been at the highest high and the lowest low and I've been in between and I would rather take the highest high and the lowest low than ever live life without pursuing something. And I just butchered all that at, but. I think you, I think the point, you got the point across. Yeah. We can just overlay his quote while you're butchering <laughs> it. <laughs> I really liked that because I relate to it because there's some low lows in this life, but really great moments too. Yep. Do you earn money as a professional volleyball player? Um, yes, next question. <laughs> advice to your younger self? I would say you're beautiful and just be confident. Find a really competent trainer and start working them with, with them when you're like 12 years old because your hips and knees are going to give out on you, bud. What is the hardest thing that we've been through in our relationship? I would say just distance and distance, dealing, yeah. dealing with, I mean, we've gone as long as 
what, like three or four months? Five. Five months of long distance. And when you go five months of long distance, it's like... Everything's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. You. Yeah. It's just tough because you aren't sure if that person is even going to remember you after five months. It is weird. It's a weird feeling when you see somebody after five months and just remembering what it feels like to be together again. Yeah, I think if the person's worth it, then you'll do whatever you can. You just have to. Yeah. Do you coach each other? I don't coach Brian because <laughs> I don't know the beach game at all. I do constantly look for him for advice. Um, he watches a lot of my games, so I'm always like, what do you see? How can you help me? We'll watch Volley Metrics, and he helps me with my feed, and he has a really great eye, so I, yeah. I really appreciate that. I mean, I've played at the highest level, and I was an outside hitter just like her, so, you know. Also, I think it's like, for women to learn from the men's game, I'm always watching video of men on like their approaches and footwork and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, it's different, but. That's the um, biggest thing is not so much women's college volleyball, but women's professional volleyball is trending hard towards the men's game. <laughs> Where is the honeymoon? <laughs> Our life's a honeymoon. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think home. Home would be a good honeymoon. The Cook Islands would be fitting because we're going to be the cooks. So now we have rapid fire questions because I know you're probably over it. Would you go to Portugal? Yes, yes. I want Please to. Please invite us. We want to go. Favorite Turkish dish? I said meze, but Ooh. the question was besides meze. So, oh. Yeah. I could go for cuff day any day of the week. Good cuff day, I'm like... Mm. Simit and Balkaimak and many men. Ooh, Turkish breakfast. Ooh, baklava. If not volleyball, what would you be? I would be a travel vlogger. <laughs> I'm actually in like an existential crisis of whether I should try to pursue volleyball or <laughs> golf. So I would be a golfer. If you want to sponsor him with golf, <laughs> he's looking for it. That's not a question on there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Who, Who is, is the, the clean one? one? <laughs> By far. Oh my god. Who said I love you first? Did you? Yeah, it was you. We kind of said it at the same time. She like half said it, and then I was like, I think I, I know admit. what you're saying, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> when are you visiting Bali, Indonesia? Whenever <laughs> anyone wants to invite us. Yeah, we're in. Um, who's better at volleyball, indoor, and beach? I'm better at indoor. We'll give you that. He's better at beach. I'm going to give you both since I can't even play either, so okay, Kelsey's better at both. way better at beach, though. So. Favorite country visited? Ooh. My heart is in Costa Rica. I could live in Costa Rica forever. Yeah. Do you miss the mullet stash combo? Are you gonna have children? Yes, we hope to have children. We are? <laughs> Shut up. Do you know some Turkish words? Merhaba. Merhaba. <laughs> uh, we know how to get around in like food, but yeah. otherwise we're done. Would you play in Brazil? Yes, I am dying to play in Brazil, hopefully one season or more. Brazil's a very cool country. Who's the big spoon? <laughs> Me. It's, it's kind of sad. Guy and I cuddle on one half of the bed and then she's just all by herself yeah. on the other half, so. Do you love Ruby G's? If you're asking that question, you know the answer to that. We don't need to tell the, we don't need to tell the world where Ruby G is. Lobes out, claws in. Lobes are out, lobes are out. <laughs> all right, anyways, that's all the questions we had. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to make a sound yeah. effect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys for sending in questions. We loved answering them. Um, please comment below if you like this video. Whatever, we've never done that. Why did I say that? Thanks for watching. Next week we're going to finals week, so I'll try to put together content there and let you guys see behind the scenes of what finals in Nanjing look like. Um, and anything else you guys want to know, comment below. <laughs> <laughs>